Hello, my name is Julian Perleko, and I am your substitute teacher for today. I am replacing National Master uh, Ralph Tan, and um, our subject is going to be the opening principles. So when you first start a game of chess, it might not be completely obvious um, what it is uh, you should be doing. Um, there are three positive principles, and there are three negative principles. At least that's the way um, that I was taught. So and generally in the opening, um, it is said that you should control the center, generally with pawns and also with pieces. Uh, you should try to develop your pieces, and you should castle. Um, those are the three positive principles. The negative principles are uh, things you should not be doing. You should not move your queen out too early. You shouldn't move the same piece twice. And you shouldn't make too many pawn moves. Now, all of those principles um, basically boil down to don't waste time in the opening. <laughs> Now, in chess, there's an exception to every rule, but generally speaking, when you're first starting out, try not to waste too much time in the opening. Um, the first game I'm going to show you is uh, probably the most reviewed game uh, ever in chess. It borders on cliche, but uh, it's so cliche, a friend of mine told me that uh, it's the chess equivalent of putting on a movie when you're uh, teaching a chess lesson. But I'm the substitute teacher, so I get to put on a movie during the chess lesson. Um, this is a game played between, this is the opera game. Uh, white played pawn e4, pawn e5, knight of 3 d6, d4, and black plays this move, bishop to g4. So, so far, both sides have kind of done a good job controlling the center. White has put two pawns in the center. Black has reinforced the center with the d-pawn. Um, but now black has played this move, bishop to g4. Um, <clears throat> so the idea of bishop g4 is if I were to capture the pawn on e5, well, black is going to remove the defender of the e5 pawn by playing bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and then pawn takes e5. But can anybody identify what the issue with black's last two moves were? What mistake has black made? Uh, what mistake has black made? It violates the opening principles. Somebody says I look like Fabi. That's true. He moved the piece twice and lost the bishop pair. Yeah, so black played the move bishop from c8 to g4, and then bishop from g4 to f3, and white has only moved this piece once. So you've essentially traded a piece that has moved twice for a piece that's moved once. Um, and also the position is uh, slightly more open than a typical position, because a pair of pawns have already been traded. So bishops should be slightly favored here as well. Um, you will notice that on the starting position, uh, well, white has developed this, this piece for free, and it's also his turn. So white is up two moves, essentially, for nothing. OK, if you were to continue to try to play uh, for white, what would you guys like to do? Mm -hmm. uh, where, which square in particular? C6. Well, c6 is not possible, right? Or not c, c, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, c4. Yeah, I agree. Bishop c4 is a really good move. Um, so, like, let's pretend black does nothing. Say he plays the move pawn a5, which moves a pawn on the side, does not control the center, doesn't develop a piece, doesn't help black in any way whatsoever. So. What would you do here with white? What was the point of your move? So you could castle? Yeah, so that's a good idea generally in the opening, but we have something like very specific that we can do here. Uh, queen all the way up, checkmate? Yeah, queen of seven, checkmate. GG. <laughs> so uh, bishop c4 makes a massive threat. Uh, black decides to defend against this threat with knight to f6. Uh, white in this position. Uh, plays the move queen to b3, which attacks f7 and b7. Um, and black plays the move queen e7, uh, which has the intention of defending f7. And um, if you were to move your queen to a different square, like let's say d7 for instance, then after queen b7, your rook is attacked and trapped. Queen c6 doesn't help you. Uh, it is white to play and win after queen to c6. What would you like to do? 
Okay, you probably have several wins, but one is better than all the others. Bishop to c4 is incorrect. The bishop is on c4, unless I misread the time. Yeah, queen c8 probably wins too, but you have something that's just much cleaner. So you will notice that this king and this queen are along the same diagonal, right? Which means that they are going to, be, so if I have a piece that, you know, moves diagonally, maybe there's a way I can take advantage of that. Move that fish up a Where? Uh, up into the left. You here? Yeah. yeah, it should be five. So the bishop is pinning the queen to the king, and uh, white has won the game. Okay. So... Um, you can't move your queen to a random square. Now, for what it's worth, black should probably play a move like bishop d6 and then react differently depending upon how white plays. But uh, queen e7 was played such that if you play the move queen takes b7, then white gets to play the move queen to b4. Now, there's nothing wrong with this position for white. In fact, uh, white is objectively probably winning here because... Uh, because of his good opening play, we have netted a pawn in exchange for our developments, and we have two bishops, and the end game is... Uh, more than just a little pleasant for white. Uh, white might even be objectively winning there. Um, so after the move queen e7, white in the game instead decided to play knight to c3, uh, saying, okay, I, I don't take your pawn, but queen e7, sure, it sort of defends against queen takes b7, but it slows down your development, right? In order for you to develop your dark squared bishop now, you're going to have to move your queen out of the way and then move your bishop, or you're going to have to fianchetto the bishop on this side of the board. So queen e7 is not, um, uh, is not super helpful for black's development. Black played the move pawn to c6. Um, what move would you guys like to play here with white? In theme with our opening principles. Continue developing bishop. Yeah. Where, where would? You just pin it up against the knight. Yeah, that's right. Bishop to g5. This is um, doing two things. We are developing a piece, and we are also making sure this knight can't move, right? So if, not, if the knight were to move away from the f6 square, then the e7, sorry, then bishop would capture uh, the queen on e7. Um, so the knight flat out can't move. This is really awkward for black to deal with. Um, if black plays like some normal, it's actually really hard to come up with some normal move for black, like uh, something like g6 fails to bishop f6 and queen b7. The rook is, again, trapped on a8. Uh, so if you play knight d7, I play the move queen b7 because you have uh, gotten rid of the defense over the b7 pawn. So black instead decided to lash out with the move pawn to b5, which in principle uh, should be a pretty good decision. Um, white decided in the game to sacrifice their knights because uh, concretely, um, I mean, Paul Morphy was a good player and calculated ahead and saw that he was winning his, his uh, material back. But also also intuitively, like you know that if, if the king goes to d8, like obviously in the opening we want to be castling, right? The king's all open and exposed. He's very likely to get checkmated. Um, a concrete variation you might calculate would be something like bishop f6 and queen d5, although even this was probably not the best way for white to play. Um, instead, black played the move knight d7, which is a good move. Castles queenside, and now I'm going to ask a funny question. What happens if black castles queenside? White's play and win. What would you guys like to do with white? capture the knight. So if you play bishop takes d7, then black will play rook takes d7. And it's not entirely clear to me what your follow-up is going to be. You're kind of introducing defenders over to the queen side, right? Uh, I'll give you a hint. It is a, it's checkmate in two moves. <laughs> we have forced mate in two. Check with the bishop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, check with the bishop, king c7. No. 
Yeah, queen b7, checkmate. Easy. King cannot go to d6 on account of the rook being on d1. OK. So in this position, after uh, castle's queenside, black did not play the move, castle's queenside in response. Instead, he played the move uh, rook to d8. And here, white played the best move of the game. Um, I will give you a really stupid plan, and I want you to improve upon that plan. White, actually, sorry, I should ask a question first. If you could pick up this rook, right, which is our um, the piece that's doing the least, right? It's in the corner, not doing very much. This rook is good. This bishop's pinning that knight. This bishop's pinning the other knight. This rook is not doing anything. So let's say you could pick him up and put him anywhere. Where, where would you put that rook? <laughs> yeah, where? E7. E7? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> on, on an unoccupied square, I should specify. Why did you say E7 instead of E8? If you're going to cheat, cheat better. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. So if you could put, pick this guy up and put him anywhere, where would you put him? A bunch of squares are identical, or equivalent in value, I should say. Yeah, just put your rook anywhere on the D file. And, uh, well, black can't really defend against rook takes D7. OK, I'm going to give you a stupid plan. OK, this is as stupid as plans get. I want to go rook E1, rook E2, rook D2, and rook takes D7. How can you improve upon that plan? Yeah, so you if you move this rook first, and then black does you know nothing. Uh, okay, let's make it actually nothing. Then rook d1, and you've improved upon my plan by a full tempo, right? So this will take you three moves instead of two. Now Paul Morphy figured out what the middlemen the, the middlemen were in that variation, so he he managed to do it even even faster. Rook d2, rook d1 though is strictly speaking improving upon that plan. Yes? Can you capture with the D rook? Yes, rook takes D7, exclam. Uh, so knight takes, loses a queen. Queen takes, loses a queen. King takes is illegal and bad. <laughs> so rook takes is the only move. And now we get to play rook D1, right? So um, we have played this, uh, this sequence in the most efficient way possible. Now, black here is losing if I take on D7. Like if you play H6, I take on D7. Queen takes loses a queen, obviously. Knight takes again loses a queen. And uh, king, ta uh, king to d8 gets checkmated. So black decided to move his queen out of the way, right? So now after bishop takes, which was played in the game, knight takes, there's no queen on e7. The bishop uh, is not attacking the queen anymore. However, uh, black blundered something. This is now white to play and checkmate in two moves. Twitch chat has got it, of course. Yes. OK. Of course, 1,500 who showed up to, be, to beginner breakdown sees it. Queen b8 <laughs> takes. Rook d8 checkmate. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, notice that at the end of the game, these pieces did not move. And they're all on the back rank doing absolutely nothing. These are referred to as Morphe opponent pieces, right? <laughs> uh, because his, Morphe's opponents were very famous for not moving their pieces out and getting uh, getting destroyed in this way. So what happened, right? It seems like black didn't do a whole lot wrong and just got destroyed. So um, it all stemmed from this move, bishop to g4. For what it's worth, this position actually isn't too bad for black. After pawn takes e5, you can play the move knight to d7 and kind of play this position like a gambit. And you um, are increasing your development as black uh, in exchange for material. Um, the idea, though, that black had in mind this game was, all right, I trade a bishop for a knight. Bishops and knights are roughly equivalent in value. Um, queen takes, pawn takes, 
everything's the same, what's the big deal? But the problem is white has two moves for free and immediately is gener uh, generating an initiative. And then white just played the most efficient sequence of moves uh, to follow afterwards, right? c3, c6, bishop g5. Um, castling kingside again would be fine, but um, bishop g5 is just the most efficient way to get your pieces into the game. So pawn b5, knight b5, and, and so on. So everybody makes fun of you know, Morphe's opponents uh, for losing quickly, but uh, <laughs> um, peop you know, uh, people even of a very high level still make, make this mistake all the time where they just forget to develop their pieces during the game. Like somehow uh, you just think, oh, I'm, uh, I'm good enough to ignore the opening principles. No, the opening principles are always important. So develop your pieces. Uh, control the center and castle. I'm now going to show a game that I played. Um, I am playing an opponent who is rated a, a, like 2210 USCF. Play the move pawn to e4. My opponent played pawn c5. Play knight f3. Pawn g6. Play pawn to d4. Cd and queen takes d4. Now queen takes d4 here technically violates an opening principle because we have moved our queen too early, but the justification for this is that the rook is attacked and he's going to have to uh, deal with that, right? So my opponent played the move knight to f6. I played knight to c3. He played knight to c6. Now, if I go back, then I have sh I have just wasted time, right? There's no point in me playing this way. So instead, I played queen to a4, which is a more active square. Um, and here, uh, black really ought to play the move pawn to d6, which is what he did. If you play a move like bishop g7, which seems good because you're developing a piece, well, white can actually take advantage of, um, uh, of black's play. So how would you guys play here with white to gain a rather sizable advantage? Knight to g5? This knight where? So knight to d4. Um, I don't know if that move loses. OK. So you are, so when you put your knight on this diagonal, so this bishop's looking over here, right? So I always got to ask myself the question if I can play the, a move like knight takes e4, knight d4, knight e4. Because if you take me, then I take you. And if you take me, then I take you. Um, my, so yeah. I'm. I'm not in love with this move. I think that it just doesn't work, right? At the end of the sequence, this is hanging, this is hanging. It's also, also just trapped. Now we can force our opponent's pieces backwards and strengthen our control over the center. Uh, Twitch Twitch chat has got it, of course. Yes. Can we push the small one in the middle? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, you may you may play pawn to e5. Now g4 is controlled by the queen. If you go knight h5, then g4, and the knight is trapped. And if you go back, well, you've, I mean, you've violated the opening principles, right? You've moved the same piece twice. You're undeveloping your pieces. White will continue with something like bishop f4, castles queen side, and you will notice that black has developed zero pieces, right? And it's about to get destroyed in the center, um, all on Morphe. Um, instead, my opponent played the move pawn d6, which is a much better move. I played e5, and far, far and away the most common and best move is pawn takes e5. Uh, that is not what my opponent played. My opponent played the move knight to g4. Um, and here, if this were a more advanced class, I would ask, <laughs> I would ask you guys uh, to try to play the best move for white. I'll just tell you what the best move is for white. Um, I played the move bishop b5, which is OK. It, I mean, white is still much better. Um, the best way for white to play, for, for what it's worth, is pawn takes d6, queen b6, and knight d5. I did not figure that out during the game, um, just because everything, <laughs> everything like kind of works out for white. But all right, ignoring that that exists. Knight g4, I play the move bishop b5, uh, just with the very simple idea that, yeah, I'm sacrificing this pawn, but look, I have four pieces developed, and my opponent has this knight on c6, and that's, that's about it, right? 
Um, okay, now I'll give you a small positional test. This is for black. Black is still worse by some margin, but you don't have to lose. It's black to play. What would you do with black? I'll flip the board for convenience. I don't necessarily understand the suggestions in chat. Uh, so I think e6 was suggested, but the issue with a move like pawn to, with pawn to e6 um, is I might attack your queen. I think this is probably probably what I would do. And then if your queen moves, I might play. So like you want to move your queen to a square that defends the c6 knight. If you go somewhere else, I will take. And you know you got you got forked. Um, shout out to our series, Don't Get Forked. It's my favorite series on YouTube. All right, queen c7, bishop to g5. Uh, and if you go bishop g7, uh, white's play and win. Oh, wait, actually, you have a sick win. You have many wins, but I didn't realize what I put on the board. Yeah. Luckily, Paul Morphy pointed out this pattern to you. <laughs> I will flip the board again. White to play and win. Yes? Can we capture the horse with the bishop? Yeah, and then after takes? Take with the queen. Nice. Queen takes c6. Queen takes c6 because if you don't take my queen, I will take your queen. And then. All right, all right, Devin. <laughs> Rook d8 checkmate, and is the exact same pattern that you had in, in Morphe's game. Um, yeah, so e6, I think, doesn't work for, for that reason. Maybe there are other reasons. But in this position, it is black to play and survive. Who can do it? And why? OK, so there's a uh, chat has suggested one of two candidate moves. And I, I really think these are the moves you should be thinking about. So. Um, my opponent played one of these two moves, and the other one, and the other one is correct. I won't tell you which one is which. Bishop g7 or bishop d7. Now, which one is correct and why? Because those are both developing moves that serve two different but important purposes. To d7. Isn't your protecting that? Yeah. Your, your queen's no longer having to protect that. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're definitely, um, bishop d7 definitely serves the function of protecting c6. Uh, OK, so there's, there's an argument to be made for bishop d7. Bishop g7 helps you castle. Okay. So which which one do you guys think is more important? Castling. Castling. Actually, bishop g7 not only helps you castle, but it stops me from castling because this breaks the rules of chess. Now, if I could castle queenside, that move would be crushing, and black would be in a lot of trouble. Um, but bishop g7 prepares castles for you and also stops castling for your opponent one of the main three opening principles is castling, so that moves pretty good. My opponent did not play bishop g7 and instead played the move bishop d7. After bishop g7, I would have played the move rook d1, and if he played bishop d7, my idea was to go knight e4, knight c5, and try to target this guy. Um, there are, uh, there's still some advantage for white, but definitely better than what he did. Um, instead, he played bishop d7, and now we have, of course, Castle's queen side. 
which is an even better version of rook to d1 because we managed to get our king safe at the same time. OK, so my opponent in this position played the move queen to c8. The reason why he did that is because if he plays bishop to g7 now, um, I will play knight to e4. And um, if you castle, then uh, white will play knight c5. The bishop is attacked. It's pinned. You can't move it. Um, black's most interesting move is pawn to a6, because if I take on c6, this would be a pretty horrible mistake. Black can save himself with bishop takes c6. Um, wait, actually, that isn't even true. <laughs> I just realized that I can take and take and take. Uh, never mind. But my intention during the game was to go here, and d7 is indefensible once, once, once again. Uh, but yeah, or even knight d7. But at any rate, uh, my opponent played the move queen c8 because he was afraid of the pin along the d-line. Um, I'm also going to tell you what black wants to do. So if black can move again, black wants to play the move pawn to a6. And if you move your bishop, then he solved a lot of his problems along this diagonal. And if you don't move your bishop, he's going to take your bishop. So my next move was designed purely against his move pawn to a6. White's play. I'm sorry? Yeah, these two pieces can't come in contact with each other at the moment, I think. All right, Twitch chat has got it. Of course, they're always too fast. Uh, yes? Oh, sorry. Oh, this is scratching. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, this, so um, in fairness to you, that move, uh, I checked the computer afterwards. That move wins. I don't actually know why. I thought about it for like two seconds during the game. Um, if you can justify it, cool. I, I can't. <laughs> so I played a different move. But rook d7 also wins. I played a simpler move. Yeah, like to me, rook takes d7, queen d7, rook d1, and then queen c8. Yeah, I see the compensation, but I don't exactly know what my next move is. Whereas in the game, the move that I played, I, I sort of knew what was going on. So remember, black wants to play a6. It's taking advantage of the fact that black has no development. He's playing like Morphe over here. What do we do? Yeah. yeah, so if you if you move your other rook into the game, then black will play a6, kicking your bishop away. And um yeah, I mean, if black manages to consolidate, like I play bishop g7 in castle, why is black worse, right? I mean, black even has more control over the center than you do on account of having more stuff. Yes? All right, I, 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 I hate you, Devin. All right, I will, I, I will respond only to chess notation from now on. <laughs> I can't see the letters and numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe other people will piece together what Devin said. What Devin said is correct, but you know. <laughs> that is what he said. Knight d5. Um, and the point is, if black plays the move pawn a6, well, what do we have now? What is the di difference? Yeah, we have knight to b6. And um, after pawn takes, obviously, we don't take the queen, where he could take our queen, and we would be lost. We instead take his rook, and we have won in exchange um, for essentially no compensation. 
Now, by the way, this is the best way for black to play. <laughs> uh, he did not do this because he saw that, and that position is winning for white. Instead, he played the move bishop to g7. So once again, white's play and continue increasing your advantage. I mean, you're, you're, you're winning, but what do you want to do here with white? I was very happy to play this move. Bishop g7 has the very, very clear intention of castling. Actually, let me give you um, an example. If I play a move like rook hg1, which might seem smart, and the black castles, some of you might say, hey, Julian, isn't that susceptible to a knight fork? I would say yes. But if you play knight takes e7, then he plays knight takes e7. And if you play bishop takes e7, he'll take you with the bishop, and after you fork him, the queen is attacked on a4. So if I take you, sorry, if I take you, then you'll take me, which is no good, right? Everything's the same. Actually, black would be slightly better in this position. Um, so <laughs> the fact that the queen is on a, whoa, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Excuse me. All right, we'll return back to this position quickly. I apologize, I have sequential memory. Do, 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 do. When was this game played? I played this. Oh, sorry, I played this game in Chicago class uh, maybe a month ago. Okay. When was the lucky game played? <laughs> 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 Unclear. <laughs> Sometime in the 1800s. Uh, my opponent played bishop d7. 1858. 1858. Okay. There, there you go. Ben Simon has all the knowledge. Knight d5, bishop g7, and we are back. All right. White to play and win. Don't all shout out at once. <laughs> yeah, Twitch chat is good. They're considering good moves. Not like the best moves, but good moves, you know. <laughs> G5. Bishop G5 is an interesting idea. I considered it during the game, but then when I saw like the move that I ultimately played, I, you know, I didn't want to play anything else. Bishop G5, he'll play F6, and then there is resistance, right? I'm not going to tell you that black's okay. Black is probably not okay, but you have a move that is really strong, and Bishop G5 doesn't quite put the game away. After my next move, black has, has no more counterplay. Bishop c5 is better than bishop g5, but um, so bishop c5 has the right idea. Um, I'll give you a hint. Bishop takes e7, though, is annoying, but isn't as good as if a different piece went to e7. <laughs> if a different piece goes to e7, then black might care a little more. Yeah, queen a3 with the idea of playing bishop takes c6 and queen takes e7 checkmate. And if you defend this way after I take you, well, our queen is no longer on a4 by virtue of us moving into a3, so we win the game like, like so. Okay. Uh, Twitch chat suggested the move bishop b6, which is interesting because um, it'll come up in a second. <laughs> uh, my opponent played the move, uh, so I played queen a3. Queen d8, and then since this is a beginner class, I'll give you this move for free. Bishop b6, as suggested by Twitch chat, and my opponent captured my bishop. Why did I do that? Yeah, bishop b6, he just castles. That's the issue. And again, I'm not going to claim that white isn't winning there, but this is obviously cleaner. Yeah, queen takes, uh, 
queen takes rook, queen takes rook, and then knight c7 is a royal fork. We have one material. I play knight takes a8. My opponent played bishop f5. I captured. Oh, sorry. My apologies. He did not do this. He played check first. Then he played bishop f5. I captured. Play rook d8. Took on h8. Played knight takes b6. And my opponent resigned because I have more rooks than he does and I have more pawns than he does. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Now, the reason why my opponent lost this game, and again, my opponent is not a bad player. This is a 2200 level player. He is, he is a master, right? Is he played the move in, in he played the moves in the opening queen c8 d8 c8 right he also played knight from f6 to g4 just wasting a ton of time in the opening so he won a pawn but he had to go knight from f6 to g4 to e5 to win that pawn um, just wasting a bunch of time so in this position I have four pieces out he has exactly one piece out and then to um, survive some tactics he played queen d8 c8 which was no good right you do so even like strong players can uh, can forget to de develop their pieces sometimes. Please develop your pieces in the opening, control the center, and castle. My opponent never castled and lost the game. All right, I'm going to show you another game that I played. All right, my opponent in this game is rated about 2050. Um, he he's quite young. I think he's he was 15. This game was played uh, in the Thanksgiving Open. I played the move knight of three. Played d5. C4, C6, G3. So uh, in this opening, white is uh, prioritizing uh, castling over controlling the center. It's fine. It's a different way of playing. My opponent played bishop f5. Uh, I castled. My opponent played e6. And I took on d5, which is strictly speaking a positional mistake, but I had something very concrete in mind. He played e takes, or sorry, this isn't a positional mistake, but my next move is. I played the move pawn to d4, which is a positional mistake because I'm giving my opponent the e4 square for free. Typically, in these sorts of positions, you wanna put your pawn on d3 to fight against these pieces. Um, d4 is okay. My opponent played knight d7, and then here I played queen b3 with the with a very specific idea, uh, or so sorry, sorry, my, my, my mistake. Bishop d6 is what he played. I played queen d3, and he played queen b6. All right, it is white to play. How can we take advantage of black's, um, uh, black's exact, exact move order? Let's force our opponent to violate the opening principles. In a sense, <laughs> Shinoi is in chat. Shout <laughs> Hello, Shinoi. Yes, that is that is correct. See if anybody in our in-house audience can figure it out. Best thing about that coffee is how cold it was. <sighs> so, ninety five violates the opening principles. This is a suggestion in Twitch chat, you are moving the same piece twice, um, and black would castle, and after castles, um, now more importantly than even the violation of the opening principles by putting, you know, moving the same piece twice, white is down the e4 square for no reason. But white can do something concrete in this exact position to justify earlier play. So if you play bishop f4, then it's just like, I mean, worst case scenario, queen takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, like, is this endgame so special? I can't evaluate this as being like anything special, like immediately. So um, maybe you can, but I <laughs> I don't know. Black seems like he should be doing all right here. You have uh, you have better. So this, this would be like a normal move, right? A normal developing move, but we want, I'll give you a hint. We want to stop black from castling. We don't want black to castle because if you can, yeah, queen e3 check. 
This is actually kind of an awkward move to meet. My opponent in the game played the move king f8. The reason why he did that is if you play the move bishop e7, which is actually the best move, after knight c3, well, you can't really castle, right? Because your bishop on e7 is hanging. Now, if you know this position and you know that it's fine, then you find the move queen d8. But black had to move his bishop from d6 to e7 and queen from b6 to d8. Um, so we have forced our opponent's pieces backwards, right? We're forcing them to move their pieces multiple times in the opening. Um, so practically speaking, the position is uh, pretty good for white, I think. White has good chances for an advantage. My opponent played king f8. Um, and actually, I learned this maneuver, this queen b3, e3 maneuver, from Grand, Grandmaster Elshan Mordiabadi, who is our current Grandmaster in residence. In 2019, I got smashed by Elshan in the US Open. And I also played king f8. <laughs> And Elshan against me played the move knight h4. <laughs> so I decided to copy you know, Elshan and play knight h4 against this dude. Um, in that game, I played bishop g6 and lost later. Uh, my opponent played the move bishop to e4, which is just a mistake because I can take the bishop on e4. After knight takes, I played f3, kicking him away, and then knight f5. So we're attacking the bishop. OK. So I have two threats. One threat is obvious, the other threat is maybe not so obvious. So threat number one is I want to take your bishop, right? Threat number two is if you move your queen to defend your bishop in some way, I will take your pawn, check you, and then take your knight, which is also a good threat. If you defend against both of those things by playing queen d8 such that f6 is defended, I will play queen g5 attacking g7. You defend against that, I will play e4, and my pawn on e4 is taboo on account uh, of... <laughs> the fact that the queen is hanging on d8. So this position is really, really, really bad for black. Um, my opponent decided to play the move, sorry, knight to e8, command line. Um, all right. It is white to play. What would you guys like to do with white? I don't really care about opening principles. You move the g-pawn instead of developing naturally. When you play g3 and bishop g2, you're trying to castle. You have violated no opening principles. I will stand by that. <laughs> Every Catalan player out there is, you know, high-fiving me. Noise suggests the move knight c3, which develops a piece. So it can't be too bad. But black has made a tactical mistake. Oh man, they're suggesting all the things. The suggestion in chat is knight d6, knight d6, and then queen e5, knight e8, bishop h6. The point being, if they take, then you take. I like the creativity, but uh, I don't got to do anything. Can probably just like develop my piece, right? Knight, knight d7. And actually, probably black wins here because you need to move your queen. And once you move your queen, I can finally take your bishop. But um, we'll say these, these pieces are lined up poorly. This is a bad relationship, right? d6 and f8. Now, that's fine as long as the piece that's on d6 can move diagonally. So I took his bishop. And then I exploited the fact that his cane and knight were lined up on the same diagonal. Yeah, queen a3. So queen a3, the knight is attacked on d6. And there's not really a convenient way to defend it. My opponent decided to go pawn hunting with queen d4. He should not have done that. He should have just defended with king e7, which is really awkward. right? You don't want your cane in the center in the opening. Queen takes d4. What would you guys like to do with white? Yes? Swap with the bishop? Yep, bishop f, oh, sorry, bishop e3. So if our opponent, 
plays the move queen e5, then we win immediately. If our opponent goes to any other square, we will take the knight. Our bishop is defended by our queen, so the queen must go to f6. What would you like to do here? Yep. Can we use the bishop to attack the knight? Yep. Bishop f4. Oh, sorry. Um, so bishop c5 is worse because after king e7, um, your bishop is subject to attack. So if I play knight d7, then I will gain a tempo on your bishop, whereas my bishop on f4 is kind of safe from developing moves. My opponent played king e7, and this is a principle that is true throughout all of, all of middle games and when there are lots of pieces on the board, not just the opening. But when your opponent's king is in the center, you should try to open the center. Because the goal of, game, of, the, you know, the goal of chess is checkmate, and it's more likely you'll checkmate him if the center is open. So what would you guys like to do here with white? Uh, knight where? Yeah, knight c3 is not a bad move by any means, but you do have something that is maybe slightly more aggressive. Yeah. Can we throw down in the center with the pawn? Can we throw down in the center with the pawn? Was the suggestion by Devin. <laughs> I will only respond to chess notation from you from now on. <laughs> yes, we can indeed throw down on e4 by playing the move pawn to e4. Uh, e4 makes a threat. Our threat is pawn to e5 because, you know, in a turn-based game where you're only allowed to make one move per turn, if I attack two different things, that's, that's annoying, right? It's going to be hard to deal with you know, both your queen and your knight hanging. Um, if you take my pawn, what, what would you like to do here? <laughs> you just shrug at me? <laughs> that's what you do? Just shrug? You want to take back? Taking back is fine. Uh, taking back threatens the move pawn e5. Uh, actually, the, this was not my intention because I didn't, you know, I don't want to calculate any checks. It's too much work, you know. Like maybe you win here, not me though. I want to do zero calculation. <laughs> yeah. So when your opponent's knights are like double pinned Morphe style, you should attack their their knight, right? Yeah. So rook here. Oh, sorry, rook to d1. Uh, rook d8 is uh, the only move that can possibly save the knight. Now what would you like to do with white? I'm sticking with the move. Yeah, now, now pawn takes is, a, is far more reasonable. Um, I got to admit. My, that wasn't my intention. My intention was to go knight c3 developing a piece, which also threatens knight captures e4, or if you would like, after pawn takes just knight e4, attacking the queen and the knight. And I like this one a little more because we developed our pieces while attacking. Your move is fine because you can justify it with very concrete analysis, that concrete analysis being knight d7, e5 takes, and then rookie one. All right, Devin. All, all right, Devin. <laughs> but that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so my opponent didn't do that. Instead, he played check. Um, I moved my king to the corner intuitively because I didn't want him to, I, I want him to be as safe as possible. Um, my opponent played the move pawn takes e4, because, or sorry, that's not true. He played the move pawn to c5. If you play pawn take, takes e4, then knight c3 obviously wins immediately. So he played pawn to c5. All right. This game did not last too much longer. Let's see if you can play like me the rest of the game. Which, and you know, it's, it's rare that playing like me is synonymous with playing well, but that happened to be the case for this game. <laughs> Uh, so just to respond to Twitch chat, in that variation, after e f e4, knight d7, e5, knight e5, rook e1, knight c4 was not legal because my queen was pinning your knight to the king. So no, that was not a defense. Bishop takes d5 and knight c3 threatening knight b5 fork. So you mean bishop takes d6. 
Um, that is not what I did. I played a very similar idea with the same, uh, sorry, the same idea in mind. Um, bishop d6 I didn't want to do because this piece is better than that piece. Like I am tagging his knight on d6, right? And I really don't want to take, a, like this is, these two pieces, this, this piece has the better relationship, right? I can trade this bishop for this knight. This knight cannot trade for this bishop, which means inherently this bishop is better than that knight, at, at least at the moment. So I am unwilling to do that. But I agree that this idea of takes and knight c3 is powerful because there's knight b5. And white's probably winning here too. But instead I played it through a different move order, which means I played what move here? Knight c3, which I, I, I like because it develops the last piece and we're, we have created a large threat. Bishop captures d6, king takes d6, and knight b5 is our royal fork. Okay, my opponent played the move knight c4 in the game. I played the move queen to b3. My opponent played knight to b6. Okay, white's play, what would you like to do with white? What is the piece that's doing the least amount of work? Oh, somebody, sorry, I should answer that question. Somebody asked, does queen b4 defend after knight to c3? The answer is no, because knight takes d5, d5 attacks b4 and e7. So knight c4, queen b3, knight b6. And now you have to ask yourself the question, what piece in white's position is doing the least amount of work? And Twitch chat has found the move after that question was asked. The other rook. There are two other rooks, depending upon your perspective. Yeah, a, rook a1. Yeah. So where would you like to put that rook? Yep, rook a d1. And um, <laughs> it is uh, there. There are no. There's not a really a convenient square for his queen to go to. Um, if he plays queen to f6, which I thought he might do, he played queen b4 in the game. Uh, I'll make that the main line. Uh, if he plays the move queen to f6, my intention was to go knight d5, and then queen takes b7, which attacks his rook and his king. And you also don't really have a way to defend. Like, if you go knight d7, rook takes d5, I have threat number one, which is hard to stop in the first place. I have threat number two, which is also hard to stop. And if you try to defend against everything, well, rook e5 is inconvenient, to say the least. Right. Um, Instead, I mean, every square has a tactical problem. He, uh, if you play queen c4, the knight takes d5, and if you take me back, I, I take your queen, amongst other things. So he decided to play queen b4. How would you guys like to finish this game with white? Yep, knight takes d5, just, just as simple as that takes. And how would you like to recapture? Yeah, now here the only move that even pretends to defend is knight c6, which is what he played. And my opponent resigned in two moves. Just some finishing touches on this game. You could play a move like queen d7 and then king f8, but that's obviously like, you know, like the game goes on and the game shouldn't go on. <laughs> Black has committed too many sins. Bishop g5 has been suggested in chat, but after pawn to f6, um, at least to me, I don't see like anything super clean. Like queen d6, sure, I, you know, nobody's going to argue with you 
that this position is better, you know, better for white, but why is it so over? My opponent resigned in two moves. Queen d6, queen d7 has been suggested, but once again, I mean, yeah, obviously white is better, probably objectively winning, like computer winning here, but the game, the game will keep going. You can give me more checks, but you can't win with a queen by, you know, by itself. So it's not super clear how you win here. If you play rook d2, then black actually might survive after rook to d8, right? If black can coordinate, technically black's not down anything, right? OK, I mean, realistically, white should still be winning there after bishop d6. But <sighs> the position has improved. Yeah, so him taking the pawn on b2 I don't think is super realistic. So he's going to stay in touch with his pawn on c5. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure this move wins, but you just you just have something that's way, way cleaner. Bishop d6 check? Yeah, bishop d6. So if king f6, then queen f5 is checkmate. So if king e8. Uh, pawn, uh, bishop takes pawn on c5. Yeah, and he resigned here on account of you having two threats. Bishop takes b, uh, c, uh, sorry, <laughs> bishop takes b4, if only I knew my chess coordinates. And queen d7 is also checkmate. Um, now, why did this happen? Oh, Elshon is, uh, has, has come in the room. Uh, I played your line that you played against me. Right. Yeah. Play yeah, yeah, queen b3, yeah. So Elshon smashed me in 2019, so I decided to smash some 2,000 later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so obviously this opening is a lot more sophisticated than the other openings that we looked at before. I mean, Morphe's game is not super theoretically interesting. In my second game, uh, my opponent uh, played pretty badly early on. Um, all of this is like kind of okay, but the big idea of queen e3 is you disrupt your opponent's developments. You force him to play a couple of you know negative opening principles, right? Like you want to castle in the opening, and king f8. Is, uh, is not a good move because you can't castle anymore, which I also played against you. <laughs> no, I played, uh, it was the other way. I played king f8 later. Yeah, bishop, I went knight d7, queen e3, bishop e7, then king f8. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, king, f, uh, king f8 is bad because in the opening you want to castle, can't castle anymore. So white already has some kind of advantage. Knight h4 and bishop e4 is bad because after I take the f5 square is, is weak. And you will notice that my opponent's knight moved a lot this game. So my opponent played, uh, played knight to f6, knight to e4, knight back to f6, knight to d6. Then later, then later he goes knight c4, and then knight b6, and I managed to trade off my knight that moved twice for his knight that moved a thousand times. So probably that's not, that's not ideal. And no, bishop c5, and my opponent resigned. He did not move these rooks. His king ended up back, back where it came from. This queen is misplaced. And yeah, black essentially only has one useful developed piece. So once again, uh, please, I, I beg you, develop your, develop your pieces in chess, control the center, and castle. <laughs> Morphe, uh, Morphe's opponents got smashed back in the day because they didn't castle. And uh, um, even, even some very strong players that I've played recently, I mean, I played a, a master who lost, essentially, for the same reason he didn't castle. And this, this player is a, like a 15-year-old expert, so he's you know, also pretty good. Um, and he lost the game because he just did not develop any of his pieces. Um, do any of you have any questions before I hand it off to Elshon? No? OK. Well, thank you for attending my class. Um, on opening principles. Thanks. Thank you.